Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today we are doing things a little out of order. What I have over here is actually a ThinkPad P15S Gen 1. Now for the eagle-eyed among you, you will see that it says Gen 2 on the bottom case, just in this corner right here. But if you are even more eagle-eyed, you will notice that there is no serial number stickers or anything else on the bottom. That's because this bottom cover is a replacement, and when it was replaced, we couldn't seem to find any P15S Gen 1 covers. So uh, the Gen 2 cover with a very minor modification still fits this chassis, and that's what was decided. So on the off chance that you do run into a bottom cover that does not, say, have the serial number stickers on the bottom, you should be pretty confident in knowing that it has been replaced at some point in its life and that you should probably do a little more digging on the unit that you're buying, including, say, seeing a BIOS screen so you can see the definitive serial number of the motherboard on the inside and know the components that you're actually getting. So, uh, in a complete uh, discombobulation of our usual format, we're actually going to start by looking at the inside of this unit uh, before I put the cover back on. So this, of course, is the P15 S Gen 1, and if you've been on the inside of a T15 Gen 1, you'll see that they're very, very similar in terms of how they look. Now, we'll talk a bit more of this when we get to the specifications, but we only have one RAM slot, and it's currently unoccupied, which means that the soldered RAM is what's driving this uh, unit right here. The Wi-Fi card, unfortunately, is soldered as well, and that is the Wi-Fi 6 AX201 from Intel, and that has Bluetooth 5.1 on the board. We can see that the uh, Ethernet port over here is actually on its own daughter board connected by a series of ribbon cables, and I'll tilt that up so you can see it a bit better. And then we also have a USB port over here on its own little daughter board as well. The main board, of course, is here, and we can see the large 57 watt hour battery that's driving the whole unit. We can also see the CMOS battery over here as well, which is easily disconnected right there if it needs to be replaced. We can also see an unoccupied WAN slot, which I, I'm finding conflicting information on whether or not a second SSD can go in there. But we do have our main SSD slot, which is a 2280 PCIe NVMe uh, device. But unfortunately, unlike the P15 Gen 1 that we featured earlier on the channel, there isn't really a whole lot to service on this. You know, what you see here uh, is more or less what you get. And the disassembly of the keyboard is the same on the T15 as well. So we're actually going to put this back together and I'll talk to you about some specifications and other information about the device. So let's get to that right now. Okay, with all that taken care of, let's open this thing up and just take a look at the inside here. So we do have a completely full keyboard with numpad on this and we'll get to that in just a moment. But some details here is that this did come out in 2021 and we are looking at, unfortunately, only three different types of 15.6 inch displays. Two 1920 by 1080s at 200 and 300 nit panels. The 300 nit is touch enabled. And then we do have a UHD 3840 by 2160, which is 600 nit, uh, 1400 to one contrast ratio and is 100% Adobe RGB with X-Rite Pantone color calibration from the factory. CPUs in this thing are 10th generation Intel. You have two i5s and four i7s, and I'll list those all up on the screen there for you. We are looking at Intel UHD graphics built into those Intel chips, and there is one optional GPU setup, which is the NVIDIA Quadro uh, P520, and that's only a two gigabyte card. So if you're looking for discrete graphics, the S series, unfortunately, doesn't really have a whole lot of options, and they're not super powerful. Moving on to RAM, we have either 8 or 16 gigabytes soldered to the board with one DIMM slot, as we saw on the inside of the machine, which regrettably means that you're only going to get 40 or 48 gigabytes of DDR4 2066 megahertz in this unit. As we saw on the inside, we do have one 2280 drive, and 
the reports on the 2242 are hit and miss. So if you have successfully ran one of these with a 2242 in that WAN slot, make sure you're putting it in the comment section down below. There were quite a few options on these. First off, the backlit keyboard was an option, so check the pictogram on the spacebar to see whether or not the one you're looking at purchasing comes with it. Other things that were optional were the microphone and camera array up here at the top. The infrared Windows Hello camera is optional, WAN optional, NFC, smart card, and the fingerprint reader are optional, but we do see the fingerprint reader on this unit. And as we saw, this is all being driven by a 57 watt hour battery. And used prices for these right now vary a little bit, but the lowest I've seen them for sale in a modest configuration is 600 Canadian dollars and up. So let's go ahead and see what we get for some boot times. And that is pretty good performance. We do have the Windows Hello IR camera with the Think Shutter on there, which is excellent. This is the Core i7-10510 with 16 gigs on the board. And this is the touch display. So we do have some additional information about the screen that is in there. We do know it's the 300 nit panel and it's the 800 to one contrast ratio variant. Just because we're doing everything else out of order today, let's go ahead and take a quick tour of the ports on this fella. So on the left hand side, we have USB uh, type C charging and all the USB ports are USB 3.2 gen one with the exception of the Thunderbolt three port, which is gen two. The HDMI is HDMI 1.4B we have a headphone microphone combo jack and a micro SD card slot. The back and the front don't have anything really going on, at least not on this model because it doesn't have a WAN card. And then we have the Kensington lock slot, the ethernet port, the slot where the uh, smart card would go, and then of course another USB type A port. So while these units are kind of the underdogs of the P series family, that doesn't mean that they're bad computers. It just necessarily means I don't know if I would be buying one of these brand spanking new. However, on the used market, if you're looking at the T15, then consider the P15S. You might be able to get one at a slightly better configuration and setup uh, than that counterpart, depending on uh, where it is that you're buying. So just know that both are entirely viable units. And I will be talking about this in, up, in an upcoming video, but the P15S does pale rather badly in comparison uh, to the P15. And we'll have those side by side on the tabletop uh, probably in the next video where we look at these units. So make sure that you're subscribing and staying tuned for that. And as always, if you have any questions, make sure you're putting them down in the comment section below. Would you pick up a P15S if the price is right? I'd like to know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.